Hi, I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs, and I'm standing here in front of a 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4xe. We're going to do a first drive review of this vehicle here, which happens to be the first plug-in offering from Jeep. Now, the Jeep Wrangler 4xe has a 17 kilowatt hour battery and is EPA range rated for 21 miles in all electric mode. Once it's in hybrid mode, the fuel economy is 20 miles per gallon. That's combining the electric powertrain with the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. We're gonna take her out for a spin, go over some of the features, do a walk around video. We're gonna talk about charging, and then we're gonna to try to figure out if this new plug-in offering from Jeep is really worth the extra cost. But first, click that like button, also, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. So on the road, the 4xe is, well, a Jeep, as you might expect. However, to me, it feels like it has a little bit of a better, more planted uh, driving experience. It could be the weight. The 4xe weighs uh, about 5,200 pounds, and that's about 900 pounds heavier than the lightest variant of the Wrangler. So I think that extra weight makes the vehicle feel more planted. I don't feel like I'm getting thrown around with every little road irregularity and bump. Now it is bouncy because after all it's a Jeep and this thing is set up to conquer any obstacle off-road that gets thrown in its way. And it's very good at that. The 4 bay is no exception. It's a true Jeep Wrangler. Uh, it, can, it can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it off-roads that a regular Jeep uh, Wrangler can. It has the same clearance, the same angle of descent, all of that as a regular Jeep. So it can, it, it's a perfectly capable off-road vehicle. Now we're not gonna be spending a lot of time off-roading on it here now. I'm gonna concentrate on the electric bits and if this is a good plug-in hybrid or not. I think there's enough reviewers out there that are gonna take this in crazy trails and tell you if it off roads well. I'm going to focus on if this is a good electric vehicle. The Wrangler 4xe has three primary drive modes. The first is hybrid, and that's the mode that the vehicle always defaults to. There's no way for you to change a setting and have it default to all electric mode upon startup. Uh, I wish you could because I think uh, many Jeep owners would appreciate that and would use that, uh, especially when they're making short trips around town. Uh, you would want to start out in all electric mode because you'd want to probably drive in all electric mode as much as you can. If you're getting this vehicle, that's kind of the purpose of getting it, to drive in electric mode. In any event, you cannot set it to default to all electric mode. You've got to press the button every time you start the car back up in order to drive in all electric mode. The next mode is, well, all electric. When you depress all electric mode, the vehicle will attempt to stay in all electric mode. However, if it decides, and I say it, meaning the vehicle, you have no control over this. If the vehicle decides that it needs additional power, it will turn on the ICE engine and that will join the party. Many plug-in hybrids have sort of an artificial soft limit in the accelerator's pedal travel. You can feel it when you hit a certain point, it's there, it gives resistance. And if you push beyond that point, you turn the ICE engine on. The Jeep 4xe does not have that. You don't have that control. You don't know when, uh, if you just push it a little bit further, uh, all of a sudden, boom, the gas engine's on, even though you maybe didn't want it to turn on. I think that's unfortunate. I much prefer when plug-in hybrids have that soft limit on the accelerator's pedals travel because it lets you know, okay, push further and you're gonna kick in the gas engine. Uh, if you don't want it to turn on, this is as far as you go. You don't get that with the Wrangler 4xe. The final driving mode is eSave. eSave gives the driver the option to maintain the battery's current charge or use the gas engine to increase the charge of the battery. To do so, you must first enter the e-hybrid screen, then tap e-save. From there, you can toggle between battery save and battery charge options. The Wrangler 4xe always defaults to a very mild regenerative braking setting. 
it practically coasts, but you can feel the regen, but it's really not strong. There is a button that you can depress, which is called max regen. And when you press that, the regenerative braking force increases significantly. Now it's still not anywhere near one pedal driving. And when you come to a complete stop uh, using the friction brake pedal, there's always an artificial creep. It doesn't just roll to a stop and then hold the vehicle there. So this is definitely not what you would consider one pedal driving. However, in max regen uh, setting, it has significant regenerative braking force. And this uh, Jeep 4xe has a blended braking system. So even when you're depressing the friction brake pedal, that's increasing the regen on the vehicle. So it's not always all friction brake, even when you depress the friction brake pedal. The first amount of travel is just increasing the uh, regen. And you can see that on the charge meter. So even in standard uh, non-max regen braking, when you depress the uh, friction brake, you see the charge meter go down significantly because it is regenerative braking in action and it's returning energy to the battery pack. The 4 by e records your last two weeks of daily driving history. To access it, you first touch the e-hybrid icon, then driving history. You could see your daily logs. The strange thing is that it only gives you the daily breakdown if you drive more than 100 miles that day. You can see the bars that show you how much you've driven, but it won't total it up for you on the top of the graph if you haven't driven 100 miles. I found that kind of strange. The Jeep 4x has a very unique powertrain, and I'm gonna let Mickey Bly, head of global propulsion systems for Jeep, explain. What we've done is given this iconic Jeep Wrangler an advanced 4xe eco-friendly plug-in hybrid solution. The customer gets what they expect, a quiet open air freedom, a more fun to drive on-road experience, and a new level of benchmark off-road capability. Overall, the Wrangler 4xe is going to be rated at 375 combined horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So let's talk about the powertrain and some of the components. First, it starts up front with our high efficiency 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It's a direct inject engine with a twin scroll low inertial turbocharger. We're building on the technology we introduced a few years ago with our e-torque. And on the front of the engine, we have a belted starter generator that delivers additional torque to the front of the engine through the crankshaft. It even eliminates the need for an old fashioned mechanical starter. Then behind the engine we have in our transmission, we've installed a high voltage motor generator unit that replaces the traditional torque converter. A clutch delivers the torque from the engine through the transmission in various different modes. When the clutch is open, the motor drives the transmission in full electric operation. Now to power all this, we put on board a 400 volt battery pack and energy comes from 96 of these lithium ion NMC chemistry cells. And this battery pack is mounted underneath the second row seat to protect it not underneath the vehicle where some other battery packs are mounted. We wanted the Jeep to be a Jeep. Driving in all electric mode, the 4xe isn't really a barn burner. It's powerful enough to get you around and for daily driving, running errands and so forth and so on, I think it's fine. But it definitely is not quick and powerful when you're only accessing battery power. However, when you kick in the ICE engine, the, the two liter turbocharged four cylinder, this thing has a tremendous amount of power. In fact, it's the fastest to 60 and quarter mile of any Jeep Wrangler, except for the top of the line V8. Uh, all of the other versions, and there's like six or seven different versions of, of this vehicle, the four by E is faster than. It has a tremendous amount of power, 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque when you combine the two electric motors with the turbocharged four-cylinder. So you don't sacrifice performance at all with the 4x8. In fact, you get better performance than pretty much any Jeep except for the most powerful eight-cylinder version. 
The Jeep 4xe has a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery. Of that, about 15 kilowatt hour is usable. Its EPA range rating is 21 miles per charge in all electric mode. That works out to an efficiency of like 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which to say the least is not very good. However, Jeep owners buy Jeeps because of what they are. They're super cool vehicles that aren't really efficient. No Jeeps are really efficient uh, and they're fun to drive. If you're looking for uh, an all wheel drive vehicle that is more efficient perhaps, you should consider the Toyota RAV4 Prime. Now, that's a plug-in hybrid that has an 18 kilowatt hour battery. It's only one kilowatt hour more than what the Jeep 4xe has. However, its EPA range rating is twice as much. It's 42 miles per charge compared to the 4xe's 21 miles per charge. So if you're not a serious off-roader, if you're not a Jeep enthusiast, you might want to take a look at the Toyota RAV4 Prime as an alternative uh, if you're looking for an all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid vehicle. The combined fuel economy isn't that great either. In fact, there's only two versions of the Jeep that have worse fuel economy. The ver version with the V6 with the manual transmission and then the 392 V8. Other than that, all of the other versions of the Jeep actually get better gas mileage. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's a little misleading because it really depends on what your driving schedule is like with the Jeep. For instance, if you do a lot of short trips, you get up in the morning, you go out, you run 15, 20 miles, you come back home, and then in the afternoon you go back out, you drive another 15, 20, 30 miles, run some errands, you can do that entirely on battery. You just plug the vehicle back in when you get back home, and it'll be charged uh, by the time you get back to it. If you do a lot of long road trips, then the fuel, the fuel economy isn't gonna be quite as good because you're only gonna get that first 20 miles or so on pure battery, and then you're gonna be running in hybrid mode the whole time where the fuel economy isn't that great. Uh, it really depends on what your needs are driving and do you do a lot of uh, short trips or do you do a lot of long trips to really be able to tell you what you're going to average with your fuel economy. You might average 30 or 40 miles per gallon with this vehicle. You might only average 21, 22 miles per gallon. It totally depends on what your driving is like and do you do a lot of short trips or do you do a lot of long trips. Jeep provides a 120 volt level one portable EVSC with the Wrangler 4xe. That's good enough to recharge the vehicle from dead to fully charged in a little over 12 hours. While that will recharge the car overnight, it's not really enough to allow many Wrangler 4 by units to really get the most out of this vehicle. And I highly recommend uh, charging it on a proper level two charging source. The onboard charger is capable of accepting 32 amps, and that's really good for plug-in hybrids. Many plug-in hybrids only have a 16 amp onboard charger. That's good for like 3.3 kilowatts. This vehicle can accept up to 7.7 .7 kilowatts and fully charge in a little over two hours. Now the point of being able to recharge a plug-in hybrid quickly really becomes evident when you can drive it for 10 or 20 miles in the morning and then come back home, plug it in, and two or three hours later, you're fully charged. You can jump back in it and drive it another 10, 25, up to 30 miles. I've gotten, uh, the most that I've gotten on a single charge was 30 miles with this once, uh, but I've been averaging like 26, 27 miles per charge. So there's days that I've driven this uh, in this week that I've had it on loan, 70 miles on all electric battery. And that's because I have a proper level two charger and uh, I've driven it, exhausted the battery, come home, plugged it back in, and then a couple of hours later, hopped in it and driven another 20 or 30 miles. So, you know, in order to really get the most out of a plug-in hybrid, you should be able to recharge it as quickly as possible. And I'm really thankful that Jeep put a 32 amp onboard charger in the 4xe because that really allows owners to recharge it quickly and drive 
really the majority of their miles on battery. Is the 4 e a good financial decision? Well, let's take a quick look at what it costs first. The 4 e is available in three different trim levels, Sahara, Rubicon, and High Altitude. So let's take a look at those vehicles as compared to their non-electric counterparts. The Sahara trim 4 e starts out at $49,805. Its ICE counterpart is $39,000. $495. That's a difference of $10,310. Even after factoring in the federal tax credit, the 4 e still costs $2,810 more. When we jump up to the Rubicon trim, the 4 e costs $53,505 and its non-electric counterpart is $43,045. That's a difference of $10,000. $460. Again, after the federal tax credit, the 4 e version is still nearly $3,000 more. When we jump up to the high altitude trim, it gets a little different. The 4 e is $55,625 and its non-electric counterpart is $50,400. That's only $5,225 more. Now, when you add in the federal tax credit, the 4 e is actually $2,275 less. One thing I do want to add here is these are on purchases. On leases, it's a different story. Uh, Jeep incentivizes the 4 e line, and in many instances, you can lease a 4 e for less than what you can its non-electric counterpart. So I didn't take this on a serious off-road adventure, but I did find a couple of mild trails that I was able to drive up and down and just test it out in four-wheel drive mode, and it obviously didn't disappoint. The Jeep 4 e does not lock the connector to the car, even when the vehicle is locked. Now, when charging in public, this is problematic because sometimes people pull up, see that your vehicle is plugged in and charging, and no one's looking, so they'll unplug your vehicle to go plug in their EV. The front seating area of the Jeep Wrangler 4xe is basically the same as any Wrangler. You really can't tell any distinction that this is a plug-in hybrid Jeep. It's a little different when you move into the back. And that's because the rear seating area is compromised a bit by the fact that the batteries are located under the rear seats you lose about an inch of headroom. Uh, the legroom is virtually unchanged. I think it's one-tenth of an inch less, so you really don't notice that, but you do notice the headroom. The rear cargo area has a false floor with a lower storage compartment where you'll keep your portable level one charging equipment. The cargo area is about the same with the seats up. However, because the 4 e has that battery, you can see that Jeep had to redesign the area a little bit and it has this lower ledge. So the rear seats do not fold flat as they do in the non-electric Wrangler and that means less cargo space. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for our first drive impressions for the Jeep Wrangler 4 e We're left with some mixed feelings. Uh, on one hand, we love how powerful this vehicle is. I mean, other than the 392 V8, it's the most powerful Jeep that you can get. We like Jeep's onboard charging of 32 amps. That'll fully recharge the 17 kilowatt hour battery in about two hours. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do frequent trips, that allows you to drive a lot of your miles on electric. Now, if you or if your driving cycle includes just you know leaving the home at morning and driving 100 miles, 150 miles, and only having the ability to plug in overnight, you're not gonna really take advantage of the efficiency that the electric powertrain has. Uh, but for short driving around town, it's actually fantastic. You could do a, the majority of your driving uh, if you just keep plugging it in when you get back home. Some of the things we don't like about it was how uh, the vehicle always defaults to hybrid uh, driving mode. You can't set it on electric 
and every time you get in the car, it automatically defaults to electric. It's gonna always default to hybrid, so if you wanna drive it on fully electric mode, you've gotta press that button every time you get in. Also, with the regenerative braking, there is a max regen button, but you can't configure the car to always start in max regen. Uh, you can, when you get in the vehicle, you've gotta press max regen. So there's two things you have to do if you really like driving the vehicle in uh, all electric mode with max regen. Every time you get in the car, electric, max regen. I guess it's not a big deal, but there should be a way in the settings to be able to configure the vehicle to set it up so that every time you get in the car, it starts up in the modes that you want it to be set in. Maybe small complaints, but those are the things we like to pick on with uh, when we do these electric vehicle uh, reviews, particularly of the plug-in hybrids, uh, because the uh, manufacturers trying to kind of serve uh, two, you know, lords with uh, the gas powertrain and also the uh, electric powertrain. Another thing that bothered me a little bit with this is the fact that the charge port door, if it's left open, there's no warning inside the vehicle. Now, a lot of people might say, you know what, you can see it right from when you're getting in your car. I, I, I get that, but People still forget, and believe it or not, an experienced EV driver like me, I forgot twice I drove around with it with it open. Um, it's just, you know, you get distracted. You unplug the vehicle, you go to your charger, you, you, you holster the connector, then you come back, you hop in the car and you drive. Problem with that is if it's raining and water gets in that charge port, you're in for a world of hurt because those are really expensive to replace and chances are, it's not going to be warranted because it's something that the owner did by mistake. Now, you might get your local dealer to warranty it for you, you know, but uh, they don't have to because that, that's on you. So uh, that's one of the things I like to always check, and uh, this doesn't have it. You can just drive off without any kind of dashboard warning that says that your charge port is open. Uh, well, that's it for our review of the Jeep Wrangler 4xe. It's a pretty good vehicle. I think it's a good shot at a first plug-in vehicle for Jeep. Hopefully we have more things coming from the brand from the recent announcements. It sounds like we have a lot more coming from the brand and they're gonna have fully electric vehicles across their product line within a few years. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel.